Hi guys, thanks for, for coming. Uh, I'm Steve Hurst, CTO at AlertMe. Um, I have been at AlertMe for five months as of this week. So the reason for the Starship Enterprise is because it is a bit of a journey into the unknown for me. Um, I'm very interested in, in what's happening in Cambridge and what's happening in, uh, in the Internet of Things. Uh, I really I just wanted to come along and talk to you about the experiences that I've found in my first five months give you a bit of an insight into uh, what I've seen at Alert Me, but also what I've seen uh, within the specifically the connected home space. Um, basically, it's on the, the reason I was so keen to come into the Internet of Things is I spent my first 10 years working in control systems, so working on um, manufacturing control, nuclear safety critical work into airborne mission systems and then had a, an epiphany that I wanted to work in financial systems for some reason, which didn't last very long. Uh, and then into the last 10 years, uh, been very much focused on the, on the internet. So uh, spent seven years working as head of development at Betfair.com. Uh, <coughs> I oversaw some fairly major change and through uh, IPO and things like that. And then I got quite interested in the internet, things that started to happen, ended up being CTO at uh, Obo Energy where I got a bit more insight into uh, smart metering and, and what was going on in the energy space. Uh, and then Alert Me came calling, which was a fantastic thing for me, since I have lived in Cambridge the last 10 years. That commute to Bristol in, and uh, London was getting a bit too painful. So what I want to do is just really talk about, um, you know, I've kind of, I've been involved in, in, in big developments. I've developed uh, systems at, at quite significant change, at quite a, right, uh, a pace. And obviously we're into a market now that's, uh, that's changing uh, and evolving in quite a strong way. I have to put these pictures up, bear with me, uh, to make up for the lack of content, but uh, hopefully I can talk around it. So, the smart home. Alert Me is all about the connected home. Uh, I'm joining, I'm thinking, what is it? I don't know. Um, I know it's around energy and security. Uh, there's going to be solutions there for care. Uh, and, and really just convenience as well. So when you look at the, the range of products that AlertMe has, AlertMe is about the connected home. So it's connecting devices together. It's making sure that you can read sensor data and making sure that you can control systems as well. So there's an awful lot of data from whether it's contact sensors, motion sensors, but also you know, we're quite prolific in uh, home energy control. So we see we've got the Hive energy system, I think, uh, I don't know if you guys know, but Alert Me is the platform behind British Gas's Hive product, uh, and also behind Lowe's Iris product. You might not know Lowe's, but they're a major kind of DIY retailer in the States. They're effectively the B&Q of the States, quite a large organization. Um, and we have a real plethora of devices, and we talk about 50 devices adopted and 22 brands, um, very different between uh, British Gas, Hive and, and Lowe's Iris. The British Gas Hive product is very much a heating control, so you can control the boiler and you can sense the thermostat and that's pretty much it. There's, a, there's also a smart, uh, sorry, a, uh, a smart switch as well that you can use. But that's, that's pretty, it's pretty limited in terms of the devices that are adopted. Um, but in terms of volume and, and functionality of that, it's, it's extremely good. Whereas Lowe's has uh, a real plethora of devices, like I say, up to up to 50 different devices, but you'll see some homes will adopt. We've got over 120, 130 devices in a single home. So quite surprising. And most of that is, seems to be around convenience and security in the States, whereas here in the, in the UK, it's very much mainly around the the energy control. So uh, just for just a quickie, so uh, basically the way Alert Me is working is we have a uh, effectively a gateway which we call a hub, which we put into the home. The hub connects through the internet to our platform uh, and through the platform to the apps in the, on the device on the uh, on smart devices. And then in the home, in the home area network, the hub is communicating to devices either via Zigbee radio network or via Z-Wave um, increasingly in the States. 
<laughs> Just move on. Let me talk quickly about alertness evolution. Um, now, let me started in, in 2006, I very much was working with uh, early adopters, tech savvy early adopters. Um, very much it was an early market. There was, uh, I thought we had to do the full range of devices. Sorry, you had to do the full range of making devices all the way through to making the app. So um, it, was, it was pretty good in terms of it built up quite a good knowledge of uh, you know how you'd actually use these devices, and a lot of people actually joined. This, I think it says 2,000 there, but I think it got up to about three and a half thousand. And it's quite a decent community for quite a small organisation which is selling these devices. But everything had to be manufactured. We had to do the full service, full end to end. But for a fairly small organisation like Alertme, it's pretty tough. Um, and what that evolved into was, you know, the, the successes of the of the the B2Cs go so going direct to the consumer enabled us to demonstrate a success to our T1, T1 partners. So there are uh, a couple of others, but it's mainly uh, British Gas and the Hive product and Lowe's and the Iris. Uh, and it saw a, quite a shift in the way we were having to uh, work with, with third parties. So as you can imagine, you know, working with larger organisations puts a very different pressures and, and constraints on a, on a small organisation like AlertMe. Um, but what we saw is the start, we start to see more and more standards-based protocols come in, uh, having to adopt third-party devices. So instead of just alert me designed and manufactured, we've seen a lot more third-party devices. Which I said we've, we deploy to over half a million homes, uh, and over 10 billion data points a month that are coming in. But the real thing here is about these key lessons around in-home performance, and that that is one of the things that. For me, coming into this industry, just uh, made me put my head in my hands. To be honest, it was it was incredibly <coughs> complex, and some of the the variations just blow you away. So, you know, imagine I'm coming from a world of 10 years <coughs> working in the internet space. You think you're having to deal with a lot of variation, but actually, you've got quite a, a, a sanitised environment. You know, you have um, you're going to deploy to someone's browser. Well, you know which browser it's going to be, and you know, or so you can see which browsers are mostly used. You can see, you know, what operating systems people are using. If you're doing a mobile app, you know, that's got a very quite a sanitised environment as well. I used to think they wouldn't. I used to think there was variation there, but as soon as you start pulling um, third-party devices, you, the world's gone mad. I mean, there are, um, you know, yes, we're starting to see standards-based protocols. But whether device manufacturers actually adhere to them is, is another thing. And whether you can actually see which version they're at is, a, is another thing. So you're constantly having to chase and test. Uh, and we, we found that it was taking the more of these third party devices that were coming along, because of course this market is exploding, the more that come along, the harder it's getting, because the quicker they're coming to market, the less quality there is in them. And there seems to be, and I think actually that. that my sense is, I've got no stats behind this, but my sense is that's one of the things that led to the proliferation of things like Z-Wave because it gives you quite a, um, almost a templated way of getting devices on board. But Z-Wave have its own problems when you're working in the home, uh, trying to get a number of devices all interconnected. Um, so yeah, we, so we've seen a lot of problems and it, it, it ends up taking quite a lot of time to adopt some of these devices onto a platform. So uh, into the point where you're seeing about, it can take sort of three to six months to actually get a device working on, on a platform because of all the idiosyncrasies of that device that you're seeing. Um, the great thing is that we didn't stop there. And actually, we created a next generation uh, platform, which we called Omnia. Um, now the interesting thing about this is it tries to address all the issues that we found uh, earlier on. And I think this is one of the things around this, um, around the internet things, which I'm going to go on to in a, in a bit, is just well, how, how the hell do you deal with this proliferation of, uh, of, uh, of uh, variants? 
So we've created our platform as a service, that's coming out. Uh, it's got templated device adoption, makes it very rapid. We've got intelligent propositions, which enables you to actually combine devices. Um, you can imagine we have uh, data insight and algorithms. The big thing that we're really excited about is the open SDK and APIs. Uh, we're kicking off our developer community to really enable, hopefully, people like you to join and experiment and innovate using a platform. Oops, did I go the right way? So, I just want to touch on this, which is just the things. This, these are my head in hand moments about, well, hold on, I know how to do large scale distributed systems. This is another one, right? It's just the same thing. What normally works? You know, what are the big things that really enable you to deliver product and get, get, a, get a solution out the door? Product clarity, absolute, without a doubt, the big clear one. But it's an, urge, an emerging market. We don't really know. We don't know what, you know, we see massive proliferation of, of devices, of solutions. We don't know which thing's going to really stick. You see a, a variety of, um, I was talking to Mark earlier that, you know, we see big systems integrators. They, they've got massive investment in uh, cloud services and messaging solutions and enterprise integration and big data solutions. So that's, it's all about this, right? Never mind them little devices. Uh, culture of excellence and continu continuous improvement. You know, we hear all about being agile and we hear all about uh, being very disciplined and, you know, you get quite large teams that need to work together effectively. This has been done to death. We know how to do this, right? But actually, when you've got that, that environment where you're just getting so many issues coming through all the time, <coughs> it's it kind of it really challenging for that culture because you're just continuously reacting to new problems that you find it. We'd want a sustainable delivery engine um, for accelerated change. It's the big thing, right? Let's just push on and on and on. You need continuous <coughs> delivery pipelines. You need to make sure all your tests are automated. You need to make sure you're continuous delivering good quality product. But when you've got a broad technology stack that involves apps and cloud services, um, you know, hubs in the home and embedded, uh, well, we do, we've got a, basically a, a Linux box in the home, deploying software to that, we're deploying firmware out to devices, and ha having to automate tests across all interoperability is tough. Normally say measure everything, just make sure you know, you've got crystal clear on who's using your website and who's using your app and, and you know, where the, all the UX work that goes in with that as well. But half our estate, in inter this internet of connected home space, it's out of our control. You know, we're, we don't know if you know, we're, we're, someone's going to add a device that they've gone and bought in a shop, or you know, how do we actually measure that? Do we know if that's talking over the radio effectively? I mean, as it is, we've, you know, the, these are things that we're finding really tough, but we're solutions, uh, uh, we've got solutions to them. Configuration manage. Uh, configuration management, you know, you need to make sure you've got a really good, strong configuration management, that you're, you've got good quality, uh, and you're in this world is an absolute nightmare. And to be honest, we're still trying to nail that one. That's, uh, that's pretty tricky. Trying to make sure you understand, you know, some new device and what firmware version it's at and whether it's going to work with something else. And what state it's in, just in one person's home when you've got millions of connected devices is, is a tricky subject. And of course you want to delight your customer. That's the big thing that comes out of uh, internet and app development. But there are so many external influences to this. Um, that's really tricky. So just a few other things, some other challenges. You know, it's, al it's always an issue of innovation and change versus stability and performance. And actually, we try and set that up internally. We've got a team that absolutely have to make sure it's rock solid, and another team that have to keep changing things. So they clash, but in a good way. <laughs> There's a massive proliferation of radio networks, protocols, standards. You know, it's all coming out. Everybody's trying to make it a, a more sanitised field. I honestly don't know whether that's going to happen. I don't. I mean, I'm, I'm new to this. I've got to learn a lot. Luckily, I've got a um, our founder, Pilgrim Beard. Some of you might know. Um, it's all over this, so I'm glad he's there to help us through that. Um, ISP status, uh, 
uh, so the reliance on, on the ISP status, so due to um, OTT and kit issues. So you know we're seeing things that we just weren't experiencing before. We, we've we've got issues with um, you know we we found issues with the BT Infinity hubs, for example, where they're they're really struggling to deal with packet fragmentation. Our operation monitoring across that wide area network of, of the internet, but also that home area network. So you're looking at uh, LQI and things in the home. Uh, we can get those kind of signal strengths, and um, but actually feeding that back up and making it useful monitoring information is tough. And again, deployment across this state, making sure you can rapidly deploy change uh, as, as you need to. So these are these are <laughs> random musings by me now. So it's not quite the wild west, no OT, but. It's interesting where the focus is. It's really hard to see. So, so alert me. We've got that. We, we've gone out at scale. It's very much lucky because we've ended up. Well, the CEO wouldn't say lucky, obviously, but you know, <laughs> we've ended up with you know hundreds of thousands of customers um, on on these platforms. So a single single platform operating you know, hundreds of thousands of devices. But there's loads of buzz around these single connected devices. And I kind of look at what we've got. And then I look at the proliferation of, hey, look, you can get a light bulb and control it from an app. Isn't that brilliant? Well, yeah, it is. It is fantastic. But really, it's about the connectivity, right? The point of the IoT is interconnected devices, not standalone apps, I think. That's the way I look at it. Uh, and then you see developers and, sorry, development organizations, system integrators looking to apply their wares. This is the point I was making earlier. You know, they've got massive. You know, they have millions of investment in these big data and messaging solutions and cloud services. Absolutely, they're going to be of use. But just because they say this is the big thing to achieve, don't worry about the devices. I'm not sure. Big data could take a different slant. This is one of the things that we're we're really quite interested on. I'll get to another slide about the architecture in a minute. But um, so big data has been about throw loads of data into a big pool, or data lake as I've seen it called now, uh, and then iterate on that and just churn through that data and generate insights from that. Well, hold on a minute, we've got a computer in every home, so we can do that out of the edge, right? But then that's interesting mm -hmm. because we're talking about doing it out of the edge, so you can generate the insights locally, pass back the insights to the, to the central server, but then other organisations are looking at, well, okay, but you could do that in the device itself. So we see devices getting more and more complex, more and more functionality, but then we're thinking, hold on, that's great for if you've just got a single device and you've got your app controlling that single device, but if you want the interconnected world, well, hmm, it isn't it easier to keep those simple, keep the devices simple and get the intelligence into that ecosystem so you can get your connected home operating as an intelligent ecosystem. Security and data privacy concerns likely to grow. Um, there's probably not much more I can say about that. Uh, we obviously need to make things secure, uh, but we need to be really clear on, on what's going to happen to people's data. Maybe that's another reason about pushing it to the edge. And the internet is built for information, not control and monitoring. Um, recently we had, so, so our Omnia is deployed on uh, Amazon Web Services. And we recently had a meeting with them about their ELBs, their elastic load balances. Um, we seem to be struggling with maintaining persistent connections. Long-lived connections are, are a struggle. Um, we've got some other issues around, uh, yeah, just how they deal with packet fragmentation as well, MTU sizes, things like that. So these are challenges that we're talking to them about. Well, hold on, your whole infrastructure is not really geared up for this. So there are lots of challenges. So these, these are things which, as I say, five months in, you kind of look at these things and think, crikey, there's a lot for us to solve here. So uh, Omnia, just, just a quick one about the architectural principles behind that. So massively scalable microservices, modular architecture, industrial reliability, it's all fast fail on, on available hardware uh, using the Amazon groups. Um, CI and CD testing, so it's all very rapid development. Standardized device adoption, so this really is about um, 
we abstract, we create a uh, uh, basically a templated abstract of devices. So a, a thermostat will have certain characteristics and you can abstract that away from the actual model that you've got. Uh, and then based on that we can create synthetic devices where you can decompose complex devices into simple elements and then reconstruct them into something that you want to use. So, uh, for example, let's say you've got your Nest thermostat uh, and it's got a motion sensor uh, and it's got a thermometer and it's got a, uh, sorry, thermostat and it's got a schedule. You can break those elements down and then you can use your motion sensor to switch a light on or use your schedule to control other heating in your home. Some things you can do. Portable business logic. Um, the basis of this is it's all JVM based, so wherever we can get a, a decent JVM, we can get the logic. Uh, low co operational costs using AWS uh, and your standard security with TLS <coughs> and encryption. The other thing I want to touch on was uh, Cambridge and London. So Alertly has offices in Cambridge and in Farringdon in London. Uh, if I'm honest, when I joined, I thought, well, great, Cambridge, 20 minutes from home, fantastic. Uh, great, London, worked there for 10 years, like it, but it's a bit different. And at first I was trying to understand the differences, but I think there is really something around Cambridge. It's that ability to focus on the real engineering, the devices, uh, analytics, the sciences. So. So uh, in Cambridge, our, our organisation has, that's really the, the centre of excellence for that, dealing with the customer, dealing with the live operational systems, understanding the devices, the issues in the home area network. And London we use, uh, they've got a, a great team there focused on cloud development, cloud services, product development. So we've got a really great balance. And it does make you think about, well, you know, there was a world not so long ago, it, well, obviously it's still there, where someone can sit in their bedroom and write an app uh, and sell loads and <coughs> it's fantastic. This, this feels quite a lot different. It feels that, you know, to get that, there's a real broad engineering requirement across uh, the Internet of Things, if we're going to be offering things like this to the, you know, the connected home out to customers. So, you know, you need that really vibrant product driven user experience, what are people, how are they actually going to use it? But you need the, the real focused, low level device engineering capability you've got in Cambridge. So it feels like we're extremely well positioned for that. And I think it's it's interesting because I've also seen, you know, I could get strung up for this, but there are tensions, without a doubt, between what goes on in Cambridge and what goes on in London. I don't know if it's just within our organisation. I don't think it is. I think there's just, you know, there's very different approaches. Like I say, very sciences based, very engineering, low level devices. Uh, and whereas London is, of course, it's the fail fast, you know, just get it out. If it doesn't work, get it out again and keep just pushing like that. With devices, you haven't got that luxury. So I'm saying it's right. I think it's the right balance. I don't think you're ever going to say, let's get, every, let's get Cambridge and London exactly the same not right for this this space um, and final thing is that is the developer community so the big thing um, so I, I uh, when I was at Betfair we did a we did quite a big job on on a developer community and it worked fantastically we went from 10% of volume through to I think about 80% of the volume of transactions coming through our API through a developer community and this is the thing that we're we're not quite there yet we're looking to launch in Q2 but we want to cultivate and encourage that, that innovation. You know, really support it. You know, so people, I'm assuming people like you or people you know who are really, well, do you know what? I've got this great idea for a little product, um, a little device, and I'd love to enable it and generate an app for it. And, um, you know, you can, the thing is that if you create this sort of community, you can create very focused apps on very specific needs uh, with, you know, putting together very specific devices, and we can provide the idea is for us to provide this platform that just enables people to hook in, provide the developer community, get it launched, get it out, 
great for, for Alert Me because you know, the wider the innovation, the wider the ideas we see, fantastic. The more, the more variety of use that we see on our platform, the, you know, the more robust that platform is going to become. Um, and you know, the, the opportunity to really discover innovation and work with people. So yeah, we're going to set that up with a community portal and forum. We've got the self-documenting API. We've got an SDK and device driver upload. That's all being productized right now. Uh, and everything will be there to help people understand how they're just hooking and get their, their device and their, their app active. So, that's it. So, um, yeah, Steve first, alert me. Uh, there's my email address if anyone wants to get in touch. But uh, that's it, thanks for your time. Do you want any questions now, Mark? Or? Yeah, we'll take a few questions while Dan gets set up. Good question. Um, so, reading the various bits of the trade, uh, uh, in the end, one output is going to win the uh, total automation space. Do you really think that's going to happen, given the drag of all these devices that are out there and coming out there? Do, it, do, I really think that do you really think that, in the end, in the end, um, it's going to be whatever Google do with Nest or whatever, or whatever essentially runs do with HomeKit, oh, or Alert well, does? Or or he does. Or he <laughs> Do I really believe that it's going to be dominated by one? Yeah. Five no. Minutes. Absolutely not. No. I don't think just I mean history dictates that, right? We just don't see that in, in in anything. But I think the I think the thing about this is it's so we don't really know how it's going to go, right? We don't know how people are going to monetize it, we don't know how commercially people are going to uh, get these systems active, but to say that just one, I think in, in, in an early market, I think that's always the concern that someone's going to come along and just decimate the, the rest of the market. But it is a huge market. It's huge. I mean, it's it, you basically, it's anything where that's got internet access. Now, I don't know what the latest stats are in internet access for the world, but um, you know, it's a huge market, huge. So no, I don't, I don't see that. I mean, obviously you're going to get your big players. That's going to be the case. But there's going to be great little niche features, there's going to be apps come out of our developer community that are going to take the world by storm and you know, I, I can't see that there's going to be one one ring to rule them all. Yeah. Who's going to win the radio question? What's the standard radio? Oh, I wish Pilgrim was here. He can answer that one. <laughs> <laughs> We're having a lot of problems with Z-Wave. A lot. So. Uh, as soon as you start adding more and more devices on Z-Wave, it, it's not good. Um, Zigbee is a big favourite uh, for us, uh, but then you see, I don't know where these things, are, so things like Thread, maybe Thread's going to you know, build on that and, and take that, I don't know. But the, the, the way we approach it is we abstract the network protocol as well. So we abstract the network protocol into uh, sort of command signals for a device, and then we abstract a device, so we abstract away from. So, so your box, you could do boxes of various flavors of radios, you do that? Yes. Or you, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Take two more. Sorry. If people want to come in who are waiting, then grab a seat while we do a question. Sorry, in red. You, you, you showed the concept of the system, you got this uh, home gateway that yeah. plugs into your, the router. Yeah. This home gateway, what 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 does it support? Does it, does it communicate with Wi-Fi on the devices, or does it support multiple protocols and you know, Bluetooth? No, we use so so radio. So we use Zigbee. We use Z-Wave. Uh, Bluetooth is in trial. Hmm. So it's radio, radio frequencies. It's radio frequencies, yeah. So if you want to connect, say, thermostat. Yeah. Does it have to be radio enabled or can right. Right now, yes. Plug in, so you need to buy a specific thermostat which... Right now, you do, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> and the, the other question was, you mentioned the developer community, mm -hmm. and what do you provide? So, for example, you got a developer who's got, who's got this specific device, who's got the thermostat again. Yeah. Could be a camera. Could yeah. Could be, could be yeah. A camera. 
So we provide so that the community will give you a forum and a knowledge base, give you documentation, give you code samples in support of. There's an API where you can hook your app if you want to control it with an app. Hook an API in, into an API, sorry. So there's uh, RESTful APIs there. But then we've also got an SDK, so it's a developer toolkit that enables you to write the device driver and then upload onto our platform. And then you can connect to the, to the home gateway if you follow these protocols. Correct, yeah. yeah. We'll take one more. Um, sorry to go out that was So, good. have you ever thought of uh, having a third party partners, like imposing standards on them rather than the other way around? Yes, we've spent seven years doing that. <laughs> yeah. Not very well. That's why we've come with a <laughs> device abstraction. <laughs> Yeah, but it is, it, it's a very good point, and, um, you know, if, look, if we were <coughs> Apple, or we were Google, then it'd be a lot easier to do that, but who's alert me, you know, so, uh, I don't know, maybe if we, if we get really big and prolific, then we'll be able to, we'll be more successful at doing that, but there's just so many, you know, it, 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 that's why I put the Wild West thing on, because it's just, there's so many new device manufacturers coming on board, but they're, they're just not there with, uh, or a lot. Sorry, a lot of them are, but um, there are plenty that are just not there with uh, the standard on the on the network protocols. Are you going to be around afterwards? Yes, absolutely. Great. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Okay.